Man, we ain't got fed and popping and neither. What the fuck? I'm working on it, man. The avenue corners too. What you mean you're working on it, man? Why we ain't at least got a shop set up down the block? We did. It was a setback. Ran our boys off. Who? Just some player, man. I'm Listen. Let him tell me. We hire him for muscle. Boy Marlo. Marlo, who the fuck is Marlo? He tied to one of the mobs? Young boy, running on his own too. Got maybe 15 spots along here and the avenue. An independent with no fucking support got all the prime real estate and we doing what exactly? Young boy ran us off the corner? I'm losing my motherfucking mind, man. Now, if it's one thing that I learned about Marlo, if you love him too much, you will justify everything that he does. If you hate him too much, you won't understand why he still should be respected. Now, as a kid, I was in awe of Marlo. As a man, I became skeptical of him. But this is a result of my personal feelings. And we must discard our personal feelings to thoroughly analyze someone. Now, before anything, we must try to comprehend what the showrunner is trying to communicate to us. Now, The Wire loves irony, so they will give two different characters a similar situation or topic and let the viewer decide how to compare them. See, the first scene that Avon was ever in is when he was chastising D'Angelo for killing somebody when it wasn't necessary. I know it ain't go so good, but that nigga Poole, he caught me off guard. He came at me like he was crazy. So you shoot the motherfucker? I'm saying, it was him or me. You in our building. You got people on both stairs. You got more motherfucking people out in the court. And you got a gun. So what I'm trying to figure out is, how the fuck you end up shooting this nigga in front of the security booth with all them people around? Saying this nigga was coming at me like, like he was trying to end me. Saying about him. It's about you. This is only relevant because it's Avon's introduction scene. And with introduction scenes, the director is trying to summarize what the character is all about. He's saying that Avon is not against murder, but he doesn't do it just because he can't. The murder at least has to benefit him in some way. This is a direct comparison to Marlowe's introduction scene. Need this, man. You think you fucked up now? What's up? Look what they did to my ride. From doing it don't, but I got some place to be. Thank you for your kindness. Y'all got to pay something, anything, to be a principal here. We, we have a job, you got a job. Look, 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 we're a little insufficient right now, okay? We're on our way to the metal man. We'll come back and pay for everything, I promise you. Now, in both introduction scenes, the topic of murder is the common denominator. This shows that Marlo is the complete opposite of Avon. He's willing to commit murder on a whim. This shows that he's less interested in people and is only concerned with his own ambitions. See, Avon was trying to lecture D'Angelo, trying to show him the mistake that he made and why he got locked up. Marlo told his soldiers that they can kill two crackheads in front of his door as long as he's not late to his meeting. My well, box still weak today. And he ain't working with the ammunition I got. No doubt you carrying a full clip. But what you gonna do when you sitting at the head of the table? Once you there, you got to hold it down. Mm. Sound like one of them good problems. Yeah. Prison and graveyards full of boys who wore the crown. Point is they wore it. You understand me? This family. No. Family is what count. Family is what it's about. Family gonna always be there because it's blood. supposed to be the ref, right? Why don't you stand up for your fucking self, you pussy? You can't just let any old motherfucking nigga get in your face. You understand? And walk away. Walk away. Turn around and walk the fuck away. 
I ain't disrespecting you, son. You want it to be one way. What? You want it to be one way. Man, I don't want You want it to be you. one Man, way. Man, stop! Stop saying that. What is the other way? Now, unlike Avon, Marlo had no personal feelings for the game. His family was not crime royalty, so he entered the game by choice and with his own personal motives, meaning the streets was just an obstacle for him to achieve his real goals. Do it feel like the crown I have right now? Do it? That's what I'm wearing on my head. Also, Marlo entered the game with a complete acceptance that killing is just a part of it. And when you live every day knowing that you might die, accepting that you might die, naturally you expect others to accept this as well. This explains why Chris is strictly business when he's on a job. Why crying and pleading is pointless because you dying now has nothing to do with our personal feelings. Being sorry won't compensate for your life. Your death now benefits us by elevating Marlo's name or protecting Marlo from the police. So no matter how much we love to compare Marlo to Avon, when it comes to murder, Marlo is more like Stringer Bell. In fact, Marlo is more like Stringer in a lot of ways and the clues were in our face the whole time. But the first one to notice was Avon. Let me help you find your tongue. You trying to get to the Russian so you can get a line to his people. You trying to get to the Greek motherfuckers because if you can, you want to cut Proposition Joe and all them other east side bitches out the connect. I mean, you a natural businessman, right? <laughs> now, Avon fans tend to love this scene because it shows that Avon is still the king. But honestly, it has little to do with Marlo or the $100,000 he got. Avon's beef was with Proposition Joe, and he proved that he can beat Joe at his own game. Remember, Brother Mozone is the one who indirectly told Avon about Prop Joe's scheme. Omar told you that and you believe that motherfucker? He doesn't strike me as a man who would tell stories, even at the point of dying. Package. The inner workings of your organization don't concern me. Now, yes, the short-term plot was to get rid of Brother Mozon, but the long-term plot was always to turn Stranger against Avon, and he did it subtly. What Joe did was he would always overpraise Stranger for his business acumen, and he would downplay Avon for his recklessness. This caused Stranger to feel like he's the more logical one of the two and that he should be leading again. Now hear me on this string, we ain't no wind greats. We all recognize your contribute to the co-op, but the feeling is this, it ain't right for you to be at the head of our table when you can't call off your dub. Call it a crisis of leadership. Now, what Joe just used on Stringer was a false dilemma. A false dilemma is a type of informal fallacy in which something is falsely claimed to be an either or situation when in fact there is at least one additional option. Joe waited for the perfect moment in the war to execute his false dilemma with an ultimatum. Either control Avon or take a financial loss because we taken the plug. Now. Stringer actually had a couple more options, but I'm not going to say. I'm going to let y'all guess it in the comment section. But Joe is the one who compelled Stringer to snitch and also the one who got him killed indirectly. Now, McNulty, who was salty about Stringer dying, crossed the Bunny Coven to antagonize Avon, showing him that it was your best friend that gave you up. The boy gave you up. That's right. And we ain't had to talk to his ass neither. Now, even though Stringer snitched on Avon, 
and killed his nephew behind his back, Avon still loved his best friend and still blamed Joe more than Stringer for his disloyalty. Avon wanted Joe dead and he knew the only way to kill Joe now was to make him useless. I say let bygones be bygones, but fuck all them east side bitches. That's just the way I feel about it. I got nothing but love in my heart for west side niggas, nothing but love. Now, because they both from the west side and they both willing to push their pistol, Avon thought that Marlo was like him. But as he sat in jail and thought about it, he realized that Marlo is more like Stringer. See, Avon, if he had an alliance with Joe, as a man of honor, he would never go behind Joe's back for the connect. Yes, this would be the beneficial move, this would make more money, but it lacks honor. This is why Avon said, you're a natural businessman. I mean, you a natural businessman, right? <laughs> now, this might have seemed like a compliment, but it actually was just an observation. See, Avon understands Marlo because this is what Stringer would do. It's probably what Stringer was trying to do before Marlo. Nah, it's just business. It's just business. Like businessmen. You're something else other than a gangster. <laughs> businessman. Yeah, I ain't no suitman businessman like you. You know, I'm just a gangster, I suppose. I mean, you a natural businessman, right? <laughs> All of Marlowe's moves are calculated with no sentimental feelings. Honor is not his thing, nor does he want you to believe it is. It was not the money that concerned me. You have been more than generous, and this is a gift of an honorable man. Clearly, but in accepting such a gift, we will give you the wrong impression. See, Marlo and Stringer's personalities are different, but their actions are identical. Their reasons for murder is the same. Marlo just does it more often and has an insecurity about his name. But this is due to his obsession to surpass Avon and Omar when it comes to street fame. But once he feels as though he's won that game, he's on to the next which is Stringer Bell's game of business. See, Avon understands not who, but what Marlowe is. This is why he tells Stringer there will always be another Marlowe. It's always gonna be a Marlowe, man. No Marlowe, no game. Now, what Avon is speaking of is Marlowe's ambition. Marlowe is so ambitious, so locked in on his goal of wearing the crown, that he is somewhat detached from reality. Not in a physical sense, but in an emotional sense. If you've never been extremely ambitious for something before, understanding someone like Marlo is impossible. He would just seem cold. He would just seem evil. But he's not evil. The game itself is evil. And Marlo chose to play at the highest level, accepting everything that comes with it. So, you don't have to like Marlo, but if we're talking about results, Marlo is effective. Now, this is just part one of this video, y'all. I know there's a lot of stuff that I left out, but I do this intentionally so I can keep making these videos for y'all. But like, comment, subscribe to my channel, y'all. Share this video if you like. It's your boy Swartz, you're here in the man's world. Ow.